Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to another video. My name is Chili. And if this is your first time coming to this channel, I want to welcome you here. Um, you probably clicked on it because you have some issues with um, shiny object syndrome. And I can totally relate. Um, even if you're a returning um, subscriber, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate each and every one of you for listening in to this little chili podcast here. Um, as you know, I'm not going to show my face because I don't want to put on makeup. Because, um, you know, I already do that for the other channel. So I figured there's no need to do that for this one. Just so I can get the production done quickly. And also you can see me a little bit behind the scenes doing work as I'm chatting with you. You know, because we're just catching up like this every day. <laughs> um, love it when you're here and love it chatting with you. So welcome to my little podcast discussion zone. Today we're going to talk about overcoming shiny objects and choosing your 100x focus. You know, 100x focus is things that everyone really loves to say but not a lot of people do. Most people have issues with shiny object syndrome, me included. In fact, I am a big, big, I'm rubbing my eyes at the moment, you can't see me, but I am a huge huge offender of this and even now i i I think i'm like just a a genius at um just jumping from one thing to another and it actually takes me 100x effort um to really focus and hone in on something so that's why i wanted to share that with you and eh, i mean if a serial shiny object hopper like me can focus and get things done then anybody can you know i don't care if you have adhd i am mildly dyslexic you know like whatever um diseases people tell you you have or or whatever come on guys at, at the end of the day it's just willpower like if you put your heart and your willpower to accomplishing something and then telling yourself that you're not going to finish the day without actually finish that thing like you're not allowed to sleep you're not allowed to eat you know god says the, for, to the one no, well actually through paul you know says that the idle hands and you know they really have no part in eating you know they, they they haven't earned their wages to to deserve eating dinner tonight you know so I really believe that and that's the principle I hold you know biblic- talking about biblical principles there's probably one that not that many people um, probably put as their goal a lot of people like to gossip you know and a lot of people like to worry I don't worry because a worry is a liability on God it's telling God that God I really don't believe that you can provide for me in my life so I'm just gonna worry about my everyday I'm going to worry about my finances. I'm going to worry about um, who likes me, who doesn't. Um, excuse the police siren out there. Um, you know, we're, we're in a world that crimes happen. So please excuse that. And you might hear that more times too because I actually realize now that I didn't shut the, the window just so I can have some air. Usually I shut it just so that the YouTube environment can be completely quiet. But I didn't do that right now. I just realized, <laughs> no wonder I'm feeling like there's more airflow <laughs> into this room. So this, you know, it's got its benefits. Um, yes, um, I really wanted to talk to you about it. And I, I'm just going to read out from these dot points because I feel like they keep me on focus better. Um, yeah, basically what I really wanted to share with you when it comes to shiny object is... A shiny, you have this shiny object syndrome, really, when you don't know what you want to focus on. Let that sink in a bit. You really have shiny object syndrome because you don't know what's going to work for you. And to give an example of this, I was in a, a situation where I really didn't know what I was doing as an entrepreneur. To, to to kind of like prove that I spent a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars AUD 
in learning different courses from real estate to entrepreneurship to sales and to digital marketing. And yeah, and and I would say the fact that I'm still working on my hustle now without a lot of income in terms of the results is because I've just been hopping on so many things and you know it's like I haven't really found the thing that's gonna take me from struggling to become super successful but what I am seeing right now after being persistent and consistent and and not having the the shiny object syndrome as much you know it's still some sometimes but not as much has allowed me the focus to begin to see the things that I put effort in take root. I once told myself and prayed to God that God please let me turn everything I touch into gold. And you know, money is not um, currency is not money. Money, I mean, is gold and nothing else. Um, even Bitcoin that still not money you know um because it can be taken away by someone else you can argue that you have private keys and public keys and stuff but honestly if you lose the key and where you keep it or you lose access to the internet all of your wealth is gone so really gold is the only fungible thing that you can hold in your hand and run away to a different country like what's happening in ukraine at the moment so I just want to say that <laughs> I know it's well speaking of shiny object I guess gold is shiny yeah. um, gold is probably the only shiny object you should not overcome in, in terms of the fact that like you should own some so and this is not financial advice by the way um, nothing here is advice that is personal advice I'm just sharing what works for me but bear in mind that what works for me is not necessarily what works for everybody and you should consider your own situation and get professional advice um, if you're in that stage of your life okay but I'm just sharing you to you as a sister in Christ and um, sharing what works for me um, so I did a lot of courses because I didn't know the like I've never my family none of us are business owners um, never done any business before don't know what it's like to be in a business for myself the only thing I ever had is a job whether it's a high paying one or a low paying one I've been through them both um, and that's all I have so when it comes to going into business then I had to take a very long route to, to figure out things and spend a lot of money to acquire knowledge from different sources um, to try and get success that's how i will put it yes so that one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars, though did i waste any of it i don't think so i definitely lost more in the scam the relationship scam that i've been through in 2020 um where i was cheated off all of my last savings pretty much um that hurt me more than spending one hundred and thirty-five thousand um, dollars in personal development because now with no savings what i can do is to implement skills that i've learned um, and i've definitely learned how to start a youtube channel albeit not a big one you know like most people are not celebrity personalities when they first start and that's fine, you know, each to our own. We can, as long as we're all growing, you know, that's the important thing. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of like how I want you to, to look at it. Um, and what I can say is, you need to figure out which way you're going to use to get there. I first started in real estate, but you need to know your financial situation. Um, this is not, once again, this is not financial advice. I really want to tell you that. But I also feel responsible to talk about finance on this channel because, you know, 
I do have work experience in the finance industry. I do have understanding of money coming from my own personal research that I believe the mass public doesn't understand. And I feel responsible to tell people about it. Not that, you know, I'm qualified or anything, but it's just I feel responsible to, to talk about it, at least. To, to bring to your awareness um, things that maybe other people will never talk to you about. Uh, none of my friends will talk to me about my finance. They will talk to me about the latest thing on Netflix, but not about my money. Like, what's the use of that to me? Um, I'm a hustler. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just taking a drink there. I'm just very thirsty today. Not really sure why. Maybe because this is my like third video in the day now that I'm recording. But anyway, um, back to the shiny object syndrome. You need to understand not everything is your answer prayer and not everything is your cup of tea so if you want to save 135,000 of your own dollars um, and not spend it on personal de development courses like I did I would say first look at your financial capability and what it takes in that method to achieve success I realized after going through $135,000 worth of courses which is at least eight or nine courses okay maybe more probably more because I still, I stopped counting there, but probably now is probably more like 140, 150,000 by now. You know, I, I, I keep spending money on it to learn more because I'm just that kind of person who wants more information. And the more information I have, the more I realize I'm able to make a decision because you don't know what you don't know, you know. Um, and that's true for me. Um, so every role can lead to success. But it depends on a couple of things. First of all, first of all, you need to decide for yourself. And let me just hide this for a sec. Why not? Let me use this as a whiteboard. I want to show you how easy it is. Master artist. Oh. Why is it not updating? Oh, maybe it's the size guide. I'm here. Okay, life makes sense. So a couple things, okay. The first thing you gotta decide for you is the is the money aspect. You need to decide for yourself if this method is gonna work for you. If you're able to put the down payment to, to make this method work. For me, like real estate was the, the first place I started. And that was hard for me because I, I, I don't have the capital to put into a house, th hundreds and thousands of dollars to put into a house to do a flip or a renovation. or And I didn't want to get into a partnership because um, basically, if you're in a partnership, you're kind of like married to that partner for life in terms of a business sense. And if they go downhill, like in if a property, like building a normal house here in Australia takes about nine months. If within the nine months he goes bankrupt or he loses his job or, or, he, or his mom fell down the stairs and now he has to like take her to hospital and doesn't have the money and needs to think, you know, a, a lot of things weird than crazy things could happen to a human life um, that you cannot take the risk of. And that's why I didn't, didn't go into a partnership. Um, and so real estate, even though that actually is the place where I spent the most of my money, in fact, one course alone costed me about $35,000. Um, that's one of the most useful courses I've done. If I ever want to do large developments, um, which now I know the know-how to get that done and I know who I need to talk to and stuff like that, right? So none of that information is wasted. It's just perhaps I'm not in a position to action it. You need to figure out if it's actionable. Actionable insights. 
that's what we call them. And can you really action that? If you can't, then maybe that method is not for you. The second one is, are you passionate about it? Like, um, when I first started going into digital marketing journey, I met a guy who, like, when at that time I was like trying to learn about click funnels, and so that person was writing blogs and and stuff like that, and and trying to drive drive affiliate marketing money into it, and I'm just not that kind of person. I I don't really like writing blogs, or nor do I. I just feel like it's a worthy thing. My personality is like a type A character where we're just like get go all the time. Designing designs for Redbubble works for me, like the one that you're seeing here. Um, but but honestly, writing a blog is not my thing. I'd rather talk to you here on YouTube and show my face, um, even if I have to put makeup on, or not show my face and talk to you like this, um, rather than rather than write a blog. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that was obviously before voice typing became a thing, you know, so maybe you're watching this many years later from when I recorded this and you're like, yeah, what do you mean? The AI does it all for me now, you know, okay, good, good on you, you know, um, but that's not the technology that I have, you know, um, anyway, so if you're not passionate in it, you're never going to make it work. And yeah, and and so basically, you need to pick something that you can imagine yourself continuing to do every single day for a year, a year. Like I would say, the minimum commitment, commit to something for a year. Yeah, and you really want to set goals that are actionable to make things work out for you yeah um is it really hard to read here I'm, I'm not sure um if it's too hard to read i'm sorry what i might do i might turn the opacity down for this yeah this is better but then now it doesn't look as pretty Opacity. I don't know. Maybe I kind of feel like this is actually better. Oh, I want to hide that. Yeah. So minimum one year. Why I say that is because it takes most people three months to make something into a habit if they do that every day. But if you put it one year, you can really test it out to see if your heart will dread waking up and doing it or you actually after all the struggles you will still keep it going like my youtube channel on chili verity i didn't know that it was something that was that hard to get that many subscribers and there was many negative comments as every youtuber gets and i hadn't experienced that yet I didn't know what it takes to be successful and all the costs that it takes to be successful, including emotional toll, not sleeping, and just hours and hours of video editing on end. Like filming would take me one hour, but editing would take me like 15. So that's just, you know, you got to understand if you're passionate and if you give it a year of full effort you will be able to figure out if that thing is really for you or not compared to what you initially thought it would be the other thing i wanted to cover so so basically that's the first point that everything's not an answer prayer second point i want to cover there is do you go broad or do you specialize and i would say in the in Honestly, everybody will go through a shiny object syndrome unless you are like Mr. Beast and he discovered YouTube and that was like the thing for him. But most of us, we don't just wake up and think that YouTube is the thing for us. Or maybe you do, you know, I don't know. What What do you think? Like put out in the, put in the comments below, let me know. But is this, is it like for me, I spent 135K and that was my broad. 
But then through that, I eventually found the things that I enjoyed and I knew could earn me money. And I found something that I could then learn more to specialize in. So it's not a question of should you go broad and learn a bit about everything. And you know, some of you will ask those things in the comments, right? Um, some of you will be on to your fifth thing by now. And you're wondering, like, should you put a little bit of effort? Like Monday, I'll do thing number one. Num Tuesday, I'll do thing number two. Friday, whatever, you know. Um, but I would say at the beginning, you can go broad. Go ahead. But with broad, you know that you're just wasting too much time in a saturated environment. There's virtually no market you can go into right now that is not saturated. Especially when in 2022, more people have lost jobs physically and more and more people are looking online for online sources of income. So you would definitely benefit from specializing in something is really what I'm trying to say. Um, because with that, then you can give it your focus and your 100x effort. I'm going to put it in caps because that's kind of like how, how badly I mean it. Um, unless you focus and do bulk quantities of whatever you're doing to bring you to success, you will never get there. And um, I remember Bethany Frankel at the 10x growth conference in 2019 actually 2019 was the year that i went to miami to see uncle g and um join the 10x growth con and and hear all these billionaires speak on stage and she said something that really hits me even till now she said i pushed it like the 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 charity effort that she wanted to do that in involves a you know, flying, like hiring private jets and sending um, like humanitarian um, like goods, like grain, like rice and stuff like that to people in third world countries for charity projects she wanted to do. Um, she said she pushed it like there was, like, like, like the, she pushed it with every ounce of her strength, with everything she got that she didn't even realize she had that, that sort of strength. You know, she really pushed it in everything she got. So if you're ever doing anything and you feel like you're not pushing yourself, that is not enough effort. This is completely not enough effort right there. So that's how you can tell. And and in fact, when you say if you're doing one YouTube video a month, you really should be upping that to 10 videos a month. If you're doing one print on demand design a day you should be really aiming to 10x that and you should always 10x that until it's physically impossible for you like i don't think it's possible for me to do 100 youtube videos a day i could be wrong you know i could be wrong because you know if if everything if every youtube video doesn't need editing and um took me three minutes and i just film and keep going um then that is technically only five hours worth of time, right? <laughs> so so technically in five hours, I should be able to do a hundred three minute videos. You know, I, technically it's possible. Okay, so maybe I stand to prove myself wrong. And now that I see that these are the stats, I really think that is an interesting thing that I should try. Um, yeah. That's how you kind of focus and overcome a shiny object. When you have something that you know is actionable, that you can gain success in terms of physically, you have the capital to put into that vehicle to make success. Um, then you will find the pathway that's right for you. Yeah. And, and you have to be passionate about it. You need to know who are you going to be. If you achieve success, say, on YouTube, then you kind of become a full-time YouTuber. And once you start YouTube, you can't really stop. This is what I really learned because the YouTube algorithm doesn't like that. So you would kind of like be commenting to that as if you were getting married for your whole life. But whatever you are going to put effort into for a minimum of 
one year, you will probably be realistically expect to continue the adventure for five more years. I would say, just as a ballpark. Um, yeah. So if something cannot um, gain your attention for five years, then maybe that's not the thing. If something's gonna go out of trend in five years, I don't know. Maybe the upside is so great that you would do it anyway. But for me, I would look for something that's more kind of like evergreen, you know, like something that's more uh, in line with things that will keep being there. Obviously, there's no guarantees. Yes. Um, what then the next thing after you have figured out what is your passion and what you want to do? Um, excuse me. The other thing that you need to figure out is how can you guarantee that success for yourself now the question is the big how yeah because unless you have a sure way you need the, the exact steps and for me why why i'm such a genius at being a shiny shiny object syndrome hopper is because um, my personality is just the kind that's not so organized. Like, I don't... Like, some people, you go to their house and everything is neat and in order and everything has this little nooch. For me, I live in kind of like an organized mess where I know where everything is, um, if it's in a mess. And if everything's too tidy, I'm like, oh man, where did I keep that again? Like, I, I, I'm a very visual person. I like to keep things where I can see them. And... and for me, I'm like, why am I keeping this toothpaste in my drawer when I need to use it every day? That's just a waste of time opening the drawer. That's the way I see it. And for me also, my clothes, I don't fold my clothes. I put them in a basket or like, well, for me, it's like a tub, like a compartment. Um, but it's all there. If I want it, it's there. I don't fold it. Well, I kind of do. Like, because... I do a little bit, but not as much as people usually do, you know, like, I just kind of like randomly stack it on there, um, in no particular order, and it's there, because I'm like, why do I want to fold a clothes that when I wear it, I'm going to unfold it, so for me, it's kind of like streamlining a lot of effort, <laughs> and I definitely apply that, um, the same, in even this print on demand, design that I'm having right now on the screen I'm like if I have this bottom logo bar here um, for every single design anyway why is it not a master you know like if I'm writing code and I need to refer to the same thing two billion times why is it not in a macro um, you know why is why do I have to type things manually when I can just do an Excel formula that will automate all of the counting for me? So, like, um, my brain is kind of, like, wired that way. So, the way that I find to, to success is very hard for me because in an arena that I don't know the steps, I don't know how to go about it, and I kind of need to be spoon-fed. And I kind of see that as being a disciple of wherever you want to go into. Um, this discipleship idea, apprenticeship idea, um, really, really hits home with me. And, you know, Christian always say about discipleship, but to be honest, we don't really follow Jesus that much um, to the point where we're really, truly his disciple walking, talking, sleeping, waking, eating, thinking, behaving, internalizing our motivations completely like him. That takes many years of practice. Um, and most people don't do that. Most people only say discipleship in lip service. That's why our churches are in such a desolate state at the moment. I just, I don't know, they just came out. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it's the truth. Um, yeah. And... I just say, whatever you want to be good at, find a mentor who can guide you. And that mentor can't just be successful um, when they're talking to you. They need to be someone who is still active in doing whatever it is. So I've been to many courses, right? And the ones that I achieved the least success, 
like value get get the less value out of them is when the guru would be teaching digital marketing and teaching you to be like an SMMA person but they themselves have stopped being an SMMA you know like um social media marketing agency so if they stop doing what they're doing then they would have like the online scene changes so much that they would be out of date by now so you need to find someone who's actively achieving the success and find ways to talk about what they're doing right now with you and i actually find that youtubers youtubers are amazing people um because if you're on youtube nowadays if it's a scam everyone will be putting that in the comments and you will know kind of thing right and secondly youtubers if they're daily updating about the thing like their hustle like the way that i'm doing this channel right now and just talking to you about what i'm doing and even showing you on screen what i'm what i've been up to like vlogging style like like be very weary of the people who have very polished video content that always talks about million dollars in success and stuff like that um well i haven't found any one of those people who really give me the value you know gary v and grant cardone aside but they are still doing the first businesses like Gary Vee still doing wine library, you know, and Grant Cardone is still having his sales company. Um, that's what they're doing. Um, that's why I continue to follow them throughout the years. And I don't listen to a lot of the other people who claim to be gurus. I might have done their course, I've done quite a few of them, um, but they're no longer doing that, you know, and, and that makes a difference. Um, find a YouTuber who is actively hustling. I think the hustle factor is very big. Um, and see if you can align with that. And, and if you do and they happen to have a, a course or something, which most of them might, then you probably want to see if it's worth your while. You know, if you can financially afford that as well. So I would say that. So you need to find yourself sure ways to succeed. And then you need to push like the way that Bethany Frankel has did. Frankel, K-L-E, I think, or K-E-L. Might be K-E-L. She, re she really inspired me that day with her push. Um, yes, and you need to tell yourself also that I'm going to turn everything into gold. Yeah, I'm going to turn everything into gold. As in physical bullion, one ounce. Well, maybe you can afford more than one ounce when you get to that sort of success. Um, if hyperinflation hasn't kicked in. <laughs> um, turn everything into gold and work hard at it. Until you res until you achieve it and, and be consistent. I would say if you're not working hard on it every day, there's something wrong with you. And and maybe not something wrong with you. Maybe it's the thing that you picked that will get you to success. I don't care if you're the most busy mom, you know, with, with three three triplets, you know. I, I don't care. Like if you want to go and achieve success, that's what you have to do. Um I don't mean to, to degrade the, the value of moms. They, like, my mom was, taught me a lot, you know. Like, and I couldn't survive this world without her. Um, but I would say, what I'm really trying to say is, if you are working a normal 9 to 5, and you're telling me that you don't have time, and that's the only money-related uh, venture you have, there's something wrong with you. In terms of your priorities, in terms of your financial, like how important you see the finance coming in from the thing that you're trying to achieve success in, um, you you don't have the right worldview of the world. Um, I'm sorry to say this because I was like that. I'm not trying to really put anyone down, but I'm just saying when I did that, 
I, I didn't. I thought I was hustling a lot with one YouTube video publishing a week. Turns out it's not. When, once I started learning about Redbubble and started seeing how Mark hustles, you really should check out his channel. Um, giving him another plug here. Um, I'll put the link down in the description below if you want to check him out. Look at the way that guy uploads two, three videos a day. Every day. And he consistently uploads 60 designs onto print-on-demand platforms. So all of you guys who are trying to make it out in the print-on-demand out there and you're uploading 60 designs a year, you know, look at the difference. This is how people get ahead. And, and you, have, you ain't even trying yet if you haven't tried this method. You know, like, you don't even know what trying is, but... Don't kill yourself over it. You know, that's it. I want to say that you can um, build up to it. Start with what you can manage. And once you kind of like figure it out, get the teething issues out, get the mic working, get the, 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 the sparkly lights glowing for your YouTube background like I did um, <laughs> um, for in my, on my Chili Verily channel. You can check that out in the link in the description below as well. Um, once you get all the teething issues out, you can look to double, triple your success. Yeah. And, and that is going to help turn leaps and bounds into your, um, your channel in, into your, into your success. Like if you're starting a YouTube channel or any other success really that you're trying to do. Yeah. The other thing that's really interesting from a Christian perspective that I want to share today with you is... Um, I bet you no one else really talks about this. And that's why I think that I can add value to you here if I talk about this. And it is prayer. Like for me, I actually tell God one day that, God, can you be my be my business partner? Can you be my business partner? Please? And I can't tell you how much of a difference that makes because now everything I do, maybe I'm just sometimes following the world um, and in the way that they do things. But once I get the teething issues out there, my brain accidentally, purposely just lands on the point where, oh, how do I align this with God? Is what I do godly here? Like Verily Kingdom, it started as a, a Christian and K-pop store, right? But, and then, like, I spent uh, one or two weeks working on SB19 designs. And after that, I started uh, another store doing some other stuff. And then my mind came back to this and thinking, why did I not do more for God in my Christian store? And... So here I'm here I am back working at this and not designing K-pop designs this week. I will later, but I'm gonna focus back on God and get that out as well because I feel like I have so much to share when it comes to strong faith in God and after being through a scam especially and still continuing to to have this faith. I think a lot of people would have blame God for a lot of disasters and bad things that happen in their life and fall away by now, which we saw a lot of back in 2020, 2021, even leading into 2022 um, with, you know, businesses failing and stuff. And so people gave up on God. But actually, a lot of these things are like human related. It's not necessarily God caused it to happen. Um, our sins brought it upon ourselves. That is really the, the main the main crux of it about the the craziness that's happening in the world today you know maybe not our you and my sins directly but definitely other people's sins definitely made that happen you know um yeah or, or the devil he hates us just in case you didn't know we're in a war every day um you know it happens so make Making God my business partner, he told me one thing the day that I prayed that to him, which is a couple of weeks ago. And he said, you don't realize it, do you, Chili? 
I know everything. As in, all knowledge is in me. So I know more about how to make this business a success than you ever do. And I said, oh, so actually, you know, like, sometimes I go on YouTube and ask people questions and stuff like that. I'm like, God, so actually I can ask you those kind of questions. And God's like, yeah, but you never do. And I thought, well, from now on I will. And I think this is amazing. And even like what you see here today, like on this screen here is a result of him telling me some stuff um, about print on demand that I might not have known, which is basically you can't just take a picture from like a royalty free site um, and chuck it on your mug or whatever and sell it because even if it's um, royalty free, they don't allow much use. Um, on a lot of these royalty free picture sites so you better be um, careful and you better modify your pictures which is what I did um, and taking it from a source that doesn't have that kind of license you know um, so God can teach you and I a lot about our businesses as if a business mentor would, because he is our father, he is our business partner, he is our savior, he is, you know, I am the I am. And he's smarter than you think he is. He is so smart, so much smarter than you think he is. I know we all know that God created everything and that he, all knowledge is in him. But I feel like a lot of us, we don't actually figure out the fact that he really created the world, you know? Like, that everything that you see, like all of these pixels that make these colors happen, he knew. So if you weren't thinking about print on demand and what looks good on a t-shirt, trust me, he knows about that more than you do. And I even read in the book of Revelation in the letters to seven churches here with the bit about the white stone and the name that nobody except for the receiver will know what it is it just hit me that that's actually cryptography like Bitcoin and private keys and public keys and stuff like that and you will have a private key on the white stone that only you know and that this white is usually a symbol of holiness and a stone is usually um, a symbol of a standing witness and a foundation and a testimony, like a sure foundation, something that lasts for a long time. And if you combine all of that together, you can imagine what God is describing is this really solid kingdom with this really sophisticated financial method with this cryptography and private keys and public keys and stuff like that happening. Ledger system. He's actually talking about the finance of his system, right? Who, who realizes that reading Revelation? You know, you gotta spend time with him, right? That's what I did today, and um, discovering that made me very excited for doing my e-commerce business because I said, God, I'm gonna learn everything I can here and also please teach me everything about crypto because I think I'm gonna need that in your kingdom so you know um so I would just say make God your business partner and ask him everything like any business issues real issues that you're going through daily ask him because he he more often than not he has he, in fact most of the time he does have an answer like, I've never been in a situation that he doesn't have an answer for. That, you know, maybe he doesn't tell you right away. But maybe he tells you before it happens. Sometimes. Like, in this case, today, that's what I experienced. And he's definitely smarter than you think. And give him the credit for being the all-intelligent, omnipotent God. He's not just there to thunderbolt you if you do something wrong and use his omnipotence that way. He is actually actively the one who every single day has the stars and the whole planet and all of creation in his hand to try and make it run to his laws and his designated formulas and macros and, you know, 
every, everything, all of the interaction effects and stuff like that. He's the one that's making everything work every day. So, if you do that, you will achieve success if you don't give up and be consistent and find the thing that you're passionate in. And the last thing I want to say is that your daily habits, I think we covered that briefly, 10x them. If you have 10x them, 10x your 10x. Once you once 10x levels become comfortable, you want to multiply that again, you know, exponentiate that. And you will never know your true potential until you like uh, 10x your 10x and then 10x your 100x and then 10x your 1000x to the point where you're like, okay, I'm breaking apart now. I really can't do this anymore. Like, and then you need to outsource and build a team and stuff like that, right? To help you 10x that too, you know. Um, basically, you don't know where you can achieve un- unless you keep doubling down, at least. Double down. Make it an exponential rather than a multiplication, you know. Like, try and do more. You can, you can do more, so... I just want to encourage you about that because the more I do nowadays, I realize the more I can do and the more quickly I do things because now I have practiced a personality that is so efficient, like, like that. well, okay, I'm not fully 100% efficient, but I would say I'm very efficient, um, that, that really practices the efficiency to, to really just shortcut everything in terms of not like finding ways to make my own life simpler without sacrificing on quality of output um, and a lot of these things is just getting used to doing things in bulk and you know rather than recording one youtube video a day i would sit down and I rock, record six or seven for the whole week and just release them during the week you know that, that kind of little efficiency things they matter and find a system and a process a system and a process develop that for everything and i'm saying this because i'm not very good at it you know um i need to actively think about systems and processes and if you have done something a hundred times you will start to see what is the similarity between all of those times that you did that and you can develop a process that's why the quantity matters um about the things that you do and if you um do all of those things you will be sure to avoid um having a shiny object syndrome yeah, thanks for listening i think this video has gone on for long enough um and god bless you in everything that you do and i really really hope that uh, you will succeed in your life in everything that you do i'll see you in the next one bye